Hey everyone, thanks for watching Eat and Talk. We are back with another episode today. We have GP the Barber. What's happening? What's happening? And I'm really excited <laughs> to interview him. You guys, um, I love having people I'm really cool with on the show. So this is going to be a really great conversation. It is. Um, <laughs> thank you for coming. Of course, of course. Thanks yes. for having me. Thanks for having me. So tell my viewers, you know, what you do, a little bit of backstory behind you. Um, so I'm a celebrity barber. Doesn't um, he look like one, you guys? Like, he looks so cool. Like, you can just tell. <laughs> He's a celebrity something. I'm a celebrity barber. A lot of people always think, like, when I'm out and about, people be like, are you an athlete? Like, do you play football? Do mm -hmm. you play, ba like, baseball? I'm like, nah. Yeah, <laughs> you really look, you look the part. Okay, so how long have you been a celebrity barber? Um, I've been a celebrity barber for probably five years. Okay. Since, since 2019. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to get into it. Tell me how you started. Like, well, what did you do before you were barbering? I did construction. Did I did construction. I used to do music. Oh, okay. See, yeah. you look like you did music too. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I used to do music. Yeah. But that, like behind the scenes, like singing or nah, like, the I used tech to, like, part? like full on, like traveled state to state doing shows all mm. type. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did I know that? I don't know. Okay, maybe not. I feel like I don't think I knew that. That's yeah. really cool. I don't I don't really talk about that, that that no more just because like that was like my old life yeah. and like, you know, I had to recreate myself and this is who I am now. So Okay, so why barbering? Why? Um um I, I don't know. I would say like so for instance, like my, my homeboy, um, he uh he would always look at my stories on Snapchat and was like, Yo, you need to come cut up my shop and I'm just like, nah. Cause I didn't have my license at the time, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was just cutting up my boys, like my homeboys and stuff. He's like, "Yo, come to the shop." He asked me like three times. I just kept saying, "No, no, no, no," because I was doing construction. And then he asked me again, you know. And I'm like, you know what? Forget it. So I quit my construction job. I went to the shop, and the first day I went there, I, uh, I had a, I had a, um, it was a, it was a white dude, like straight hair, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Nah, I can't do it," like, cause I wasn't good at cutting straight hair. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "I can't do it." So I had to give it to the next barber. And then the next day, because he had two shops, the next day he, he took me to the other shop at the college in Mankato, and that was just straight white hair. Mm -hmm. So I was I had to do it, you know. And that's kind of, like, where I, I got good at was as far as, like, doing, like, different types of hair, mm -hmm. hair textures. And once I was there for probably maybe, like, I don't know, maybe, like, seven months, and then I had moved to the cities. And then once I moved to the cities, that's kind of, like, where, like, you know, people are, like, you know, better and, like, more on top of their, you know, on their games. So I'm like, okay, I got to kind of step my game up. So, like, when I came to the cities, that's kind of, like, where I, like, I stepped my game up, just being around, you know, different barbers that I, like, I looked up to or whatever. And um, I just kind of took off from there. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. So who are, like, some barbers that you looked up to? Um, I would say, I would say Kim. Yep. Kim, um, Henry, he's another barber I look up to. Um, Thomas Fades, um, I mean that's 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 yeah. uh, that's about it. That's yeah. an elite, definitely an elite squad. Yeah, that's yeah, what's yeah. Up. Nah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so then you finally kind of start getting into it, and then you officially went to like you said school, right? Yeah. So I actually was cutting hair probably for like five years. Before I got my barber license, okay, because that's because I was I was traveling a lot, mm -hmm. so um, I started in L.A. I pretty much moved to L.A. and was like living out of my car in Hollywood, cutting out of my car, like just you know, American dream, yeah, just yeah. fresh, like fresh out in L.A. and just like I didn't know, you know, so I ended up getting uh, hooked up with this barber shop in Studio City or whatever, and they like they have a lot of like high end traffic that would come in, and um, like producers, um, the front office of like the LA Lakers and stuff like that will come in. Um, one day I was lucky enough to actually cut Mark Wahlberg. He mm -hmm. had came in cause he had like a, um, he has like a, like a fitness, like a fitness spot, like a rehab spot next door. Cause I was like in a strip mall. Okay. And he had, um, I'm like, I had seen him one day and I'm like, yo, is that Mark? He's they're like, yeah, he comes in here with his boys all the time. I'm like, for real. All right, cool. So then a couple of weeks later I see him, he came in and I right, cut him up and, is that the first celebrity you cut? That was the first. Yeah. No. Yeah, that was the first. Yeah. 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 And like, it was just like, you just went up to him and introduced yourself or? Well, no, I, I, he was like a walk-in. So I just was okay. like, yeah, I was like, hey. 
Wow. Oh, I got you. <laughs> Y'all wasn't like fighting over him or something? <laughs> no, nah, because they've they been like the people that are in the shop, like they've been seen him. him, like they've been cut him, they've been like, you know, they know him and all yeah. that stuff. So, like, no, nah, it was just like a regular regular guy coming in the barbershop. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> but, I want to talk about like what the culture was like in LA and what your experience was like and what you feel like you learned from there before coming here. Um, I would say I learned a lot. Um, I've cut in a few different shops in California. Um, and I would say that like the like barbering out there, like you definitely have to step your game up because you never know who's in your chair as far as like producers, actors, like you, you don't you don't know who's like who you're cutting until so you like start talking to them and like get to know who okay, this is um, who I'm cutting. And I would say like barbers are good out there, but I've always said said this and I always will say this. I feel like Minnesota is the hub of barbers because mm-hmm. we have a lot of barbers and we have a lot of good barbers. Yeah. And people think like all oh, bitches because California is big, like, you know, they should have a lot of good barbers, but they really don't have that many good barbers mm-hmm. that I've seen at least. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I could take from like California is just like the people that I, I was around, the barbershop owners that I was around, I was just, you know, pretty much taking, you know, things that I liked about them and putting them into my own pot, you know, and just kind of like, you know, mixing it up and just making it my own way. Mm-hmm. Um, so like go- what kind of things did you feel like you took away and you kind of twisted in your own way? Um, so there's this one barber, uh, I forget his name, but he was really good with like like he was good with like people skills mm-hmm. and um I was never really good with like people skills as far as like um um like comp like my confidence wasn't all the way there. Mm-hmm. So like just watching him and being around him and seeing like how he moved with like certain people and stuff like that, it kinda like, okay, so let me let me take that from him because it's like obviously it's working for him. So mm-hmm. I kinda took that, you know, and just was like, you know, let me put that, you know, into my mm-hmm. into my pot. So Yeah. Would you like consider yourself like extroverted or introverted? Um, honestly, I I don't know. I'll probably say maybe both. Do you need to be in this industry, like, extroverted? Because, like, I, I mean, I'm a girl, so I, I know, like, how salons work. But, like, in barber shops, like, I hear and see and notice that conversations are, like, a big thing when yeah, you're, like, going nah, to see most, a Yeah, most definitely. I would say that, like, my confidence had, like, shot up through the roof, you know, ever since I've been a barber because, like, you have to have that confidence, especially if you're trying to, like, do certain things and, like, you know, move a certain way to get to a certain place in your career, you kind of have to have that, you know, as far as like, you know, talking to people, people skills, confidence, looking them in their eye, you know, all that kind of thing. So, yeah. um, no, I definitely, I say definitely, LA definitely made me get my confidence up a lot more. Yeah. And I'm sure like the outcome, like after you're done and mm-hmm. the compliments that they give themselves, give nah, you facts. like helps you a lot. Right. Yeah. 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 Cool. Facts. No, that's really awesome. Um, I also want to like kind of stay on top of that before we transition. Um, a lot of people relate, you know, looking good and confidence to like mental health and men's mental health. Yeah. And do you feel like it's the work that you do or just in your industry, the work that you guys do as barbers is like impactful to mental health? Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. I've had a lot of clients like for real, like tear up and cry like for like Bubba Sparks. When I cut Bubba Sparks we was in the hotel and this is my first time meeting him like he doesn't know me i don't know him and he literally like we had such a great conversation and he felt so good and felt so felt so alive like after the cuts where he was like breaking down and like kind of like tearing up towards me because he was just like telling me like about his like past life his you know his ex you know wife and all kinds of stuff like that. And it's just kind of like crazy to see that, like, I'm able to, like, touch people, too. And I also, too, I feel like just because I have, like, a warming energy and, like, people, like, you know, it's, it's easy for them to, like, open up to me because they, they feel that, you know, they're comfortable enough to do that. So, like, just, yeah, just, yeah, I would say it's definitely impactful. Yeah. yeah. How about to the other side? Like, when we talk so much about, like, the change work that um you guys do to your clients like how about you as like a barber do you also feel like it's helped with like your mental health um yeah yeah i mean because i mean there, there'll be times where like i have clients that i i get to like you know kind of like relate to or like you know talk to and like kind of like let them like know how i feel which is nice because i mean we don't i mean as men we don't really get to have that you know opportunity to like open up you know saying stuff like that so like i would say that yeah it has um so yeah that's cool okay so after la where'd you go dang after la i went back i came back to minnesota Mm -hmm. i was in minnesota for a while um cutting at a shop and that's when i would say 
I had got my first NFL client, okay. which was Laquan Treadwell. Okay. And I'll, I will, I can only say, so out of all, like, the people that I've cut, all the celebrities, all the athletes that I've cut, there's only one barber that's ever thrown me anybody, and that's Smooth. So shout out to Smooth. And, um, yeah, he threw me Laquan one time, and ever since then, that's kind of, like, where I kind of got my foot in the door with, like, the Vikings or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, other than that, like, I've done, you know, all my reaching out, you know, word of mouth, like, mm-hmm. it was it was all me, so yeah. Um, it's kind of dope to be to like you know to know that and to see that like now that you know looking back, you know it's yeah. kind of like I've done everything that I've done. I've done that by myself. I'm yeah. Like I don't, I don't have a team. I don't have a manager. I don't have I don't have anybody. Yeah. I just have me. You yeah. know, So it's just it's just pretty dope to like you know see like where I've been and what I've accomplished. Yeah, absolutely. That's really amazing. So like your title. Well, I call you like eccentric, luxury, yeah, yeah. celebrity barber. But um, originally, like you're a mobile barber. Yeah. So, what does that mean? A mobile barber to me, it's just freedom, really. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, like, I don't, I never really like to be like tied down, and I like to move a lot. Um, probably maybe because of my ADHD, I don't know. But like, I just feel like there's more in the world to you know that that to see that, you know, that offers a lot more to you, especially as a barber. Like, you know, you don't have to be an in-house barber. There's so many different ways that you can take your barber career. You can be a mobile barber. You can be a shop barber. You can be a barber, an Instagram barber. You can be, a, you know, somebody that does designs, like, you know, or colors and all that stuff. So, like, I wanted to take the mobile barber because, for one, I got kids. For two, it being the fact that I got kids, it kind of took me away from them because I'm in the shop 24-7, and I just, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. And um, even though, like, yes, sometimes I would lose clients because I'm always on the move, but I also did have the clients that would, you know, respect my my grind and um, to where, hey, just whenever you come back into town, call me, mm-hmm. you know? So I still have those, I still have you those clients. That yeah, so, more. like, anytime, like, so I've cut in California, I've cut in Florida, I've cut in Colorado, I've cut in, I cut in a lot of different states. And these states. are all places you just drive to. I drove to, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, and being the fact that, like, so, like, one time like, I was in Utah for, like, three weeks cutting up the college, and, you know, now I've built that relationship, you know, in that short amount of time to where it's, like, anytime I go back to Utah, I can hit these people up and they're going to get a haircut. So like I can, I can travel and I can go on vacation, but like it's not vacation because it's like, I'm still you know working. working. Yeah. It just looks like vacation. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this is dope to be to like, you know, anywhere I go that I've been to before I ha- I know I have clientele and I know that people will still wait for me. And when I come back, I can cut them and make money. Yeah. I mean, and that's like the importance. I mean, do you agree? Like when they say, you know, relationships over transactions because it's oh 100 percent 100 percent because i, I yeah. wouldn't be where i'm at right now if it wasn't for relationships yeah if it because at first when i when i got into the game i'm gonna tell y'all barbers don't make it about money because yeah. some of these clients they'll know that like that's all you're doing it for mm-hmm. is just the money like they'll see that they'll feel that like if you're trying to get them out the chair hurry you know this mm-hmm. and that like don't don't do that like yeah i've had a like me and a barber got into it one time because i was like i'll give out a free haircut you know, why are you going to do that? Like, yeah. I don't care. Like, yeah. to me, it's my, it's my passion. So it's like, it don't, it's not, it's not work. Mm-hmm. I don't wake up in the morning like, oh, I don't want to work. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I, that's not like, so for me, giving a haircut, like that's, that's cool because I know where, I know what a haircut can do and I know where it can get me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause there's like, there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of doors that can open for you as a barber and you can leverage barbering in so many different ways to get into so many different doors. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, I'll definitely relationship over transaction yeah Yeah. is there any like challenges with doing the mobile barbering or just in general like within your industry like obstacles Um, that you face for mobile barbering yeah um because well um before i got my van i i wasn't i didn't have a van i was just would you know pop up you know pull up to wherever they're at but once i got my van i would say the most challenging thing was to be able to find the clients that are willing to pay them the amount that I was, you know, asking because of, you know, the van, you know, because. So is it like, do you charge differently when it's like a mobile barber compared to going into a barber shop? Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, yeah. So like with the mobile barber and like, even though I've been mobile in the past, you know, I it just, the, the pricing was different just because like I put, you know, my time, my you know, my sweat, all that stuff into this van. And 
being the fact that I got to drive the van, the mileage, you know, the gas, you know, all that kind of stuff, that that all plays a factor. So I had a, I had to kind of like come up with a new system of like how I'm gonna charge people because it's like now when I when I when I when I did the you know the van, I would charge them like it would be like an invoice. So like it would show like the mileage that I came, it would show you know the haircut, the standard price, you know, it, it would it would show it would break everything down so that they can understand like okay this is why I'm paying this much, mm-hmm. um, and not just because you know it's also an experience like you know that's my you know my slogan experience experience luxury so like I want people to experience you know like what it feels like you know to be able to have that luxury of somebody coming to you yeah in a you know nice van. It's you know decked out you know all, all all type of stuff. So it's like I want people to experience that. So like that I don't know, but yeah, like, I feel like you'd be like my like if I were to like you know hire you, I feel like I'd get a more personal experience than going into a shop and there's like no, ten thanks. other people surrounding me. It's loud. Yeah. But like this is like more in like your own comfort. Yeah, and I would I would say like once COVID hit, like that's where like mobile barber for me. Like I didn't have my van yet, but like. What I, I seen with like how people didn't want to, you know, go into the barber shops, mm-hmm. you know, even after, you know, COVID hit, like there's still people that don't want to go into the barber shops and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it's like I kind of took advantage of that yeah. and like, you know, made sure that like, hey, I got you anytime you need, you know, you need me to come. I got you. Oh, like, my God. OK, can we, I love talking about 2020. Like, I mean, obviously it was a horrendous year, but it's the time like it changed all of our lives. So nah, can you talk a little bit about that? Like. I know you just mentioned how things probably got a lot like easier for you and probably picked up a lot of traction because yeah. of that, right? No, hundred percent. The store. I was still traveling though. Like, yeah, I don't care what no, they were saying. No, but that's cool. Like, like you have the luxury, but compared to people like a lot of people, like let's say they're at the malls. The malls are closed, mm-hmm. you know, or like just the stores are in general, like, mm-hmm. or people just didn't feel safe or comfortable, you know. So, um, but for you, like, maybe it was a time you started, like, thriving in that mm-hmm. year, right? No, facts. It, most definitely. A lot of people would hit me up for haircuts because of the fact that there was no barber shops that weren't open and stuff like that. Like, doctors would call me. Like, I had to come into, like, so, like you know, there's this one doctor that called me. I came in there, like, had, you know, my mask on, my gloves, like, all type of stuff. You were performing surgery yeah, on the doctor. Pretty, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, you know. So it was yeah. it was different, you know, cutting like that. Cause I normally don't wear like gloves when I cut, mm-hmm. but I mean, it was, it was cool, but I definitely mm-hmm. made a lot of money during 2020. Mm-hmm. And, um, even though like people weren't like traveling, like I was still traveling, yeah. I was still flying. Like there was flights that I was on where there's only like 10 people on the flight, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And on top of that, I was still driving across country, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So like, cause at, at that time I was living in Florida, so I was driving back and forth, you know, from Florida, like, like it was nothing, you mm-hmm. know? So it was just kind of like. Yeah, I was definitely, you know, yeah. making money. And then every, every like, city that I would stop in, you know, I would just, you know, set up somewhere mm-hmm. and be like, yo, yeah, to oh cut. Wow. Know. that's a- Okay, so what's, like, your favorite city that you've stopped at? My favorite city? Mm. Mm. And why? That I've stopped at and, like, cut hair at? Yeah. Um, jeez, I don't know. I have a lot. I mean, maybe you can name your top three. My top three? I would say, I would say L.A., Florida, and Vegas. Okay. Yeah. So why? Why? <laughs> why were they like? Why is your? Doesn't have to be in order. But why is that? Well, your top I would three? say like for like L.A. I would say just because like that's like where like I kind of started it. Yeah. Like everything. So like just being able to like say that like I've cut in you know L.A. Hollywood like I've like you know. Came from the trenches type shit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I cut out my car, like literally was living in my car. So I would say that, and then for like Florida, I would say Florida because Florida was different when it came to barbering because there was a lot of like Dominicans, a lot of mm-hmm. Puerto Ricans, a lot of Hispanics that were that were cutting hair, and they're really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people had dreads out mm-hmm. there or locks. Mm-hmm. So like you had like being the fact that like I had to like, you know, it wasn't, I, I didn't do a lot of like full haircuts. I just did like linings, low tapers, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and for Vegas, um, I would say Vegas because I've, I've done a lot in Vegas, you know, I've cut at the Grammys in the Vegas, like, you know, in Vegas, I've, you know, I was with G easy and all them, you know, mm-hmm. for the Grammys and like that, the moment, like the moment I got to Vegas is like, I literally drove two days, got there, 
and went straight to work. Like, mm-hmm. somebody was like, yo, I got somebody for you, boom, boom, boom. And he didn't tell me who it was until I got to the hotel and I seen who it was. And I'm like, oh, shit, geez, and his manager and shit like that. So it, it was just, you know, it's just crazy. So, like, those those would probably be, be my top three cities just because of, like, you know, what I've done in yeah. those cities. Yeah. yeah, I feel like Vegas was, like, huge. That was the Grammys? Yeah, that was two years ago, yeah. Yeah. yeah the Grammys in Vegas. So I want to hear a little bit about, like, how, was that your first time at the Grammy? That was my first experience? time. Like, yeah. how was it that? It was crazy. Like, how was... did you even, like, get that opportunity? Not everybody just gets to show up at well, Grammy Well, so, events. like, that's, like, that's another thing, too, like, with me. Like, I don't, like, wait for opportunities. I go and I go for the opportunity. Mm-hmm. So, like, I really went to Vegas with no intentions of cutting hair. Mm-hmm. I just was like, I hope this works out. Mm-hmm. I hope, you know, I can make some money. I hope can find I can, someone I can like, find yeah, something. And out. my homeboy that lived in L.A., he, the moment I got there, I was like, hey, I'm in Vegas. He's like, all right, bet I got somebody for you. I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah, go to the hotel. I go to the hotel. He didn't tell me who it was. I waiting in the lobby. I don't even, I don't know who I'm looking for. All of a sudden, I see these three big security guards walk out, and they're like, "You GP?" I'm like, "Yeah." And then I look over, and I see Gez and his manager walk by. I'm like, "Oh shit!" Mm-hmm. They're like, come with us. Mm-hmm. I'm like, "I right, bet." Yeah. <laughs> so then I went up to the hotel, cut him up, and then um, Gez he, he had left to go get ready for a show, and his manager's like, "Yo, like Gez about to perform right here, you know, on the stage. Like, really, you want to come party with us?" I'm like, "Hell yeah!" Mm-hmm. So like, I literally drove for two days, got there, cut him. Left, got, I took a shower, changed, went back to the hotel, and went to go party with them and watched G Easy perform and shit. And I was on stage with them and shit. Yeah. And then after that, I went back to the hotel, t- took like a little nap, and then we I went to Drea's that night because French Montana was there. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, again, you know, knowing me, I, I'm not, I'm not looking. I mean, I'm looking for opportunities. I'm not just waiting, you know. For mm-hmm. so I, I, you're I'm not just waiting for someone to like fall yeah. upon your lap. Like you'll approach. So like, as you so like when I went to Drea's. I seen French Montana and all those people in the back behind the stage or whatever. And I was, there's, there's like a little like walkway that like, you know, you can like stand next to the, they had like a divider in between. Yeah. So I was standing right there. And when I had, I had seen somebody like from his camp, like walk away and I had tapped him on the shoulder. I was like, yo, what up, bro? Like, you know, I'm a barber. I'm here for the Grammys. You know, if you need to cut, I'm not even going to charge you, bro. Just, you know, let me get the opportunity to cut you and bless you. It doesn't that. He's like, ah, I bet. So he had gave me his number and um, I gave him my number. And then he had called me the next morning like, yo, come to the MGM. And then I went to the MGM and I had cut him up. And, yeah, he had walked the red carpet that day. And, you know, yeah. it was. That's it was, so it was cool. Dope, and I love how you say, like, you know, you don't just wait for opportunities like you go and like nah, you know facts. exactly like how to approach and that takes a lot of courage i'd be nah, like facts. nervous to, you <laughs> facts know. so yeah is it so I, um so yeah so when i had cut him like i, I didn't know who he was or whatever but then once like i you know started to talk to him he was like pretty much like a dot connector like he knows mm-hmm. and he'd be around everybody kanye lil uzi wayne like he'd be around everybody i don't know what he does but mm-hmm. he makes i know he makes music but like he's just like yeah. he, he's just in the mix he's in the right now, yeah. Like, yeah so like he had tagged me and everything like yo start gp for the you know grammy's cut you know he's on the red carpet and it was dope because when i was waiting for him in the lobby at the mgm i got to see everybody that was all dressed up for the grammys mm-hmm. like i met like gwen safani's uh sax you know player mm-hmm. i met a lot of cool people like yeah. i was just just to see like the the because they had the grammys at mgm so mm-hmm. like to be to see like the uh the lion or like that gold or whatever it, it is like i took a picture by that yeah like, it was a, it was a really really dope experience yeah yeah and then eventually you're back in like minnesota <laughs> and then yeah and then i came but back you to came minnesota back with like motivation no nah, facts new experience and new talent yeah. and like something to like get you moving forward mm-hmm. um so like obviously like mobile barbering is different here in minnesota you don't like it's not as yeah i, I would I, honestly i don't shit i'll keep it real with you like i feel like i'm the only mobile barber in minnesota yeah that's doing, it, that's doing like yeah there's barbers that like do house calls and stuff like that but like that it's it's more than just a house call yeah like i'm literally driving and traveling that's to state to state to go to, like, to to go to like you know to these places that i know that like you know i can you know i can get into like when i was you know, living out here, and I went to the Pro Bowl in Orlando. Like, I again, I had no intentions of cutting anybody, but I, what I what I did is, I seen I seen everybody who was gonna pull up to Orlando, and I hit them in their DMs. I hit them in their their managers, their PRs, their emails. I I did everything that you think of, and then when I got there, the next morning I had a missed call, so I called the number back, and I'm like, Yo, what's up? He's like, This is Shiggy, and I'm like, Who? 
He's like, this is Shiggy. You had hit me up. I'm, I'm like, thinking like, oh shit. Yeah. This is like Shiggy. Like, yeah. And like, I was just like, so like happy and all that stuff. Like my man's with me and shit. Mm -hmm. And we just like, yo, we got to go. So we went to the hotel. I cut up Shiggy, his homeboys and all that shit. Like, you know, for the Pro Bowl. And then, um, that's so cool. Yeah. And it's I'm about to start DMing everybody. Like, hey, come on, <laughs> eat and talk. <laughs> no, nah, facts. I mean, because, you know, I mean, to me, it's like, what are you, what's the worst you want to do is tell exactly. me no. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Ooh, okay. I, I'm not going to get hurt because you told me no. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's worth a shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm not, like, again, I'm not going to just sit around and just wait for somebody to throw me an opportunity or be like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because, like, I don't have people, I don't have, like, a support team. I don't have, like, friends that, you know, that are also, like, you know, that are that are able to like you know put me in you know in that position so like i had to make that position myself i had it yourself, yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying so like but yeah like back to you know minnesota and, and mobile barber and i just i feel like i'm really the only mobile barber out here in minnesota that can, that is actually doing what i'm doing yeah 100 there's really there's really no other barbers that are doing doing like me like um and then when i had got my van like again like it's new here um you know, nobody's really like, oh, yeah. like, oh shit, like, what is this? But I will say, like, when I got there, like, when I got my van, like, I got so much attraction because I drove that van because I was supposed to. So when I had built my van, I built it. I, was, I had three weeks to build it because I had to get to the Grammys mm -hmm. to go with G Easy and them. I didn't make it because I didn't have enough time. Mm -hmm. But the following week was the Super Bowl mm -hmm. in AZ, mm -hmm. and I ended up getting it done like th three days before the Super Bowl. And I was like, all right, bet it's done. I drove it all the way to AZ, cut for the Super Bowl in AZ. And um, then from AZ, I went to uh, I went to LA. I stayed in LA, went to Vegas. He stayed in Vegas and all that stuff. But all the, like the attraction that I, like that van got me, like yeah. people were just like, wow, What's what is on? this? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like people, like people have seen like mobile barber shops before, but like, the way I did mine was just like so unique. It's like so different, you know what I'm saying? So like that's what I feel like, you know, got a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. And um it definitely grew my my Instagram a lot. You know, I had yeah. got a lot of followers. It's just people just, you know, mm -hmm. like just, oh wow, what is this? You know, like, yeah. I wanna follow you. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? So That's but, cool. Is that how you like I was gonna say like aside from like physically networking and putting yourself out there, like how does marketing play a role in like what you do? Like do you give people your social media handle? Like, how can yeah. they contact you? Yeah, so, like, um, I would give them my social media handle. I, I, I pass old cards. Um, I mean, I had, you know, my Instagram on the side of my van, my phone number. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not like, big on, like, posting and, like, is everyone always tells me I need to post more. Like, mm -hmm. I'll hold, I'll hold, like, shit in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, for instance, like this little baby situation that I just just did just recently for the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. Don't like, just skip over it like like so lightly. <laughs> like you gotta tell us like what little baby is. So we don't know. Like Nah, so like I mean like I so like I haven't like posted really nothing about it. Like I'll post my So story. you went first of all, let's pause. He went to the Super Bowl this year, twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four. And he got yeah. the opportunity to cut Loyal and I forgot his other baby's name. Um uh Loyal and uh The younger one. L Loyal is a young, young Oh, younger. is he? I thought he was the older one. I think. Okay, well, anyways, he got to cut yeah. little baby's two sons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that's really cool. Yeah, well, I mean, not not just little baby, but like I went out there, um, because you know now I'm cutting for the Vikings. You know, mm -hmm. I cut a lot of the players for the Vikings, so I went out there because I knew they were gonna be out there. They told me to you know pull up, so I cut like KJ Osborne, Tristan Jackson. You know, mm -hmm. I went to go party with them, you know with them and their agency and you know, all that stuff. So like, um, so I was out there, and a lot of people like knew that I was out there because like again, you know, I've been in Vegas before. I lived in Vegas, you know, prior to you know, prior to that, you know, and so a lot of people know who I was, you know, and stuff like that. So um, Sunday when he had came into town because he had a show in uh at Drea's mm -hmm. um his his assistant just texted me or he had called me I missed the phone call and his assistant's like yo this baby's assistant and I'm like who mm -hmm. I'm like <laughs> what baby's assistant yeah. so I had called him and shit he's like yo yeah I'm, just, I'm a little baby's assistant we you know we in town da 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 we need we need cuts we need liners and all that shit so like I bet send me the location and uh they were at the uh at the phone blue and uh they had just finished that too. Like the Fountain Blue is like it's 
immaculate. Like mm-hmm. it's, that motherfucker nice. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. So we went up to like the 80th floor. Like I never like experienced nothing like that. Mm-hmm. Like it's not just like like you know how like hotels like you know they have like you know like floor one to like 30. Mm-hmm. Well. This was like floor like forty to eighty. Mm-hmm. And like you had to like go through like a certain spot. Yeah, and different like way to get different there. Different doors, mm-hmm. like security, like and then go into the elevators and then go up. I'm like, ah, damn. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and um I was with I was with his braider, so she had so we were in her room for a little while waiting for them to, to pull up. Mm-hmm. And then once he pulled up, me and her, we walked up to, we walked up there and then went up to the eightieth floor and then we when we got in there, like his he had a big ass penthouse. I think it was huge, like big old like um chandeliers marble floors um it had a big ass bar pool table like it was huge mm-hmm. and um it was a bunch of him and his guys his cameraman um his kids were there so yeah i cut his kids up and then after i cut his kids up they had a, a water fight like they had a bunch of water bottles Cute. and they were just throwing water on everybody like so it's just dope to be this like watch yeah. little baby because like, little, little baby like he literally he's a very good dad like mm-hmm. he he brings his kids he brings his boys everywhere mm-hmm. red carpets you know all you all these events it's just you know when he you know he was like oh daddy's got a show tonight you know he's like i'm gonna take, I'm gonna take you guys to the super bowl but you know after that you know daddy's got a show and i, I gotta go to work duh, 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 duh. Mm-hmm. but it's just dope to be able to see him in that element you know yeah. to be a father and to you know he's running around with the water with the water bottles too like getting little boys getting yeah. his guys and all that shit like That's you know what i'm so saying cute. so like yeah, it was so, i mean i mean celebrities are humans obviously no 100 yeah. percent. but yeah. it's super cool to see them in like a personal <clears throat> element yeah. and like to be themselves because we just see them you know on screen so no, facts. that's really cool and to, I, I mean we feel relatable yeah 100 percent. like again like i mean i've been like i've been around a lot of celebrities i've been in mike tyson's crib like i've been you know around steve-o from jackass like i've been around a lot of a lot of celebrities but like so like i i didn't get like you know like oh my god little baby you know i didn't get like that mm-hmm. but i i was i had a proud moment like mm-hmm. I'm with i mean you baby. should be proud of yourself you're like yeah like no this yeah, is yeah. Cool. yeah 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 but like you know I, I didn't like you know i wasn't just like you know like starstruck or whatever but like i was like i, I did have a problem with, like i'm a little baby like that's him right there like mm-hmm. you know he, he was he was cool mm-hmm. you know he was he was real cool he was, he was a dope dude he was on the phone most of the time and he was just like talking with his homeboy and like he was just like the guy got 1.7 around just from my neck up i'm yeah. just like ah. wow <laughs> i think it's like but i got 1.7 million just around my neck yeah you know what i'm saying but no, he's, he's he's definitely a, a cool dude. We chopped it up for a little bit, stuff like that. So we're we, we're locked in. Yeah, that's so, cool. So you'll I you'll, you'll see me more a little baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we will. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna transition a little bit because it's amazing, like hearing about all this, like you know, work that you get to be connected with, like all these celebrities and everything. Mm-hmm. But also, like you have a huge passion for like community work as well and like giving back. Uh, so I want to touch base a little bit about like what are some things that you do to like give back to the community over the last few years. Um, the last few years I had did a um a free backpack giveaway haircut giveaway with a few of the Vikings players, um Daniel Hunter, Linville Joseph, uh, Kyle Rudolph, when he was when they were here. Um, so we had did that. We had you know they were sitting down. They were giving out free backpacks, doing autographs while I was giving out free haircuts next to them. Um. And I also got uh, just recently, about a year now, I've been I got linked up with this company out of Arizona called Clip Dart, mm-hmm. and what we do is we focus on college students. Mm-hmm. Well, what I do with them is that we uh, we focus on college students, and we uh, we give give them free haircuts because mm-hmm. like college students like is like, in like different like states, different cities to where it's like it's hard for them to get haircuts, mm-hmm. um, especially by like you know good barbers, mm-hmm. and. Uh, excuse me um so we just like with that like we focus like on mental health um because it's hard for you know for them to get haircuts and you know and um you know once they get the haircuts you know they feel good you know they feel you know they feel alive like you know then we also too like we also talk to them you know like see like what their majors are like where they're from you know what they're going through so we try to help them you know try to get through like you know certain you know like life situations and stuff like that you know i mean i'm 33 so like i've i've been through a lot you know so it's dope to be to like you know talk to these younger kids and be like hey you know this is what you know could happen it's gonna get better yeah no facts it's definitely gonna get better so um I do that. So, but like Clip Dart as a whole, like what, what they do is they give out free haircuts to like you know like senior citizens, homeless mm. uh, shelters, and it's um, Clip colleges. Dart, like C L I P D A R T. Yeah, Clip Dart. Okay, yeah, Clip Dart. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
So, um, yeah, so, like, we, uh, we're in a lot. We're, I think we're in, like, seven different states. Um, Arizona's the main hub, so they, they do a lot out there mm-hmm. with a lot of different, you know, um, shelters and stuff like that. Yeah. So. That's odd. Like, how does that make you feel? I like it. I like it a lot, yeah, because mm-hmm. I get to travel again. Yeah. And then also, too, um, it gets me to be able to, like, you know, learn about I mean, other people that. and different cultures and stuff like that. Like, you know, like a lot of these kids, you know, they come from like India, mm-hmm. China, like, you know, foreign exchange or whatever, like or international or whatever. Yeah. And it's just dope because this is like, just recently I was in Wisconsin at uh, Eau Claire mm-hmm. and uh, I had cut this one kid from China and he's just like trying to explain the haircut, like, because they don't explain it how we, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He's just like, wow, you're just so detailed. Like, Back home, they do it in three minutes and they're done. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? like I told you when I went to Saudi Arabia, yeah. it's just chop chop. That's no, it. Facts. <laughs> and um, he was like, uh, like, what do you say? He's like, haircuts are expensive out here. Like back home, it's like oh, yeah. five dollars. Yeah, it's five ten dollars like, because they just shave. You. Either yeah. you're bald or yeah. they trim. That's it. There's no in between. There's yeah. no designs. There's no fades. There's no lineups. No, like facts. they don't so do he that. He was just like he was happy to be able to get that get that experience and get that haircut for me. Like you know, yeah. to see how like. Cause that was his first haircut, you know, in the states. So mm. it was just like, so this is this is dope, you know. It's a, you know, that's so it's, cool. Yeah. I mean, I want to know, like, cause you said, like, I mean, how was it like cutting different texture? I mean, you're you're used to cutting like texture, like African Americans yeah. or people with you know coarse hair, but like when you're cutting like Caucasian or you know European or Asians, like, how did you like? Is that something that they teach you in barber school or like? I just feel like it's such a dramatic difference. No, like it, it is a difference, but being the fact that like I was mobile, I got to experience different textures in mm-hmm. different states and different cities, mm-hmm. and I just got really good at it. Wow! So okay, I was just like, I, it don't matter what texture your hair is, I, I can cut it. Yeah, I would do a damn good job. So yeah, <laughs> you do definitely. So. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit more about the Vikings. Um, who are some of the players that you cut? Um, and, you know, like, what's that like? Where do you cut them? Like, how does that work? Yeah, so with the Vikings, um, so I would say I've been cutting the Vikings for a while. But the beginning of 2023, the beginning of their season of 2023 is really when I took off with the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my clients, one of my main clients, one of my good friends is Tristan Jackson. He's a wide receiver for the Vikings. Um you know, it's crazy because actually beginning of 2023, I was living in Vegas with my van mm-hmm. and I had came back in March to get my, my sleeve finished. Mm-hmm. And it was like the end of March, beginning of April. And that's when they started to come back for OTAs. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I started getting, you know, people calling my phone like, hey, I need a cut. And then I would say by like May, like May, by like June, I was like, cutting a lot of the players mm-hmm. a lot of the players because of Tristan because he was you know word of mouth so I was just like you know what I'm gonna just stay here and see see what I can do with this um so you know the, the season went on and I would probably say through the whole season I probably cut about 30 of the players and now I'm to like now I'm about like at five coaches mm-hmm. so I cut like 30 players and five coaches wow um, that's awesome and it's not just like you know a one-time thing like there's a there's a few players that i just cut like one time like mm-hmm. like jordan hicks i only cut it one time mm-hmm. but like every time i see him like he still like shows love like you know he gave my boys a football during training camp and all mm-hmm. that and signed their football and like all that kind of stuff so like i still have a relationship with these guys but mm-hmm. even though i don't cut them on a regular basis but i do cut a lot of the players on a, like on a weekly basis every two weeks every week i'll probably say like 20 players whatever what do you do when they're like when it's off season they travel or go back home because not all of them stay here or like are from here um sometimes so like this off season uh some players that were hurt that had they had to stay back to get you know training Mm -hmm. so like i would still cut them um some of the players you know they'll come back and forth you know throughout the off season they'll hit me up you know for a haircut and then two also like you know i'll like for the like for the you know for Vegas you know I went to Vegas to go cut them you know mm-hmm. so um, I do have a player that um, is gonna start doing like he's gonna start flying me out mm-hmm. so that will start um, back when the season starts um, but yeah I mean for off season it's slow but like yeah. the coaches are here still mm-hmm. so I mean I still cut the coaches mm-hmm. um, and when I cut them I either go to the facility. 
the hotel that they that they're at like for like the beginning of the season for training camp i go to the hotel and come cut them at the hotel um i have cut the facility um or most of the time i just go to their house yeah yep. wow that's cool so, i love that yeah. um who is someone you haven't cut yet but like you want to cut like period yeah i would probably say like jordan lucas just Jordan with, Lucas. Yeah, just because everybody's be like, "Oh, you look like Jordan Lucas." And oh. I, 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 I like him. I like him a lot too. I, I, love, I love his music. He's, yeah, he's very underrated. Yeah. Um, I would say him and probably like Adam Sandler or something like that. Oh, Adam Sandler would be yeah. cool. Maybe because yeah, he's a funny guy. I yeah. love Adam Sandler. Yeah. Yeah. What about like not to choose like favorites, but yeah, choose a favorite. Who's your favorite person that you've cut so far? My favorite person. She's. Mm -hmm. Um. Like celebrity, it could be like the most like highlight. Maybe they have the best personality. Or I would say Arsenal. He's he's one of my he's one of my good clients. He's also a celebrity. He's a, um he's well, everybody knows him as a battle rapper, okay. but he's he he still does battle rap. But he he he's moved on from that. He he does his you know he does music. He uh he's acting. He's in like Wild and Out. Like he does all these different you know different things. But Arsenal is probably one of my favorite. Yeah. Um, just because when I was living in Florida. Again, I had hit him up in the DM. You know, I was like, hey, first time, I'll cut you for free. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, he responded back to me. I went over there, cut him up for the first time. And it's been four years now, and we're still locked in. Locked in. Wow. I was just in Florida not too long ago, cutting him up mm -hmm. for my documentary. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah. Okay. Well, that's the next thing that we'll talk about before we wrap out is your documentary. Like, what are you documenting? How long have you been doing it? When is it wrapping up? Um, so I've been documenting since, since my beginning of my barber career. Like, wow. Um, How did you know? Like, is that you were just like, I'm going to start documenting this? Well, yeah. So, like, I mean, everything that I've done, like, I've documented it, like, whether by myself or, like, I had, like, you know, somebody with me that's, you know, holding the camera. Mm -hmm. um, but just recently, I had linked up with somebody at a barber competition in Vegas last year, and he has a whole production team. And he was like, yo, because I was I also had a, I did an interview at the at the barber show or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yo, I like your story. Like, we need to, like, do something. And I'm like, well, I'm shooting. A, I am doing a documentary, you know. So so since that day, he's literally flown out to Minnesota like three times to come shoot with me. He's he's met me in Florida to shoot with me with Arsenal. Um, we were just because he lives in Vegas. So like mm -hmm. we were just I was just in Vegas with him, you know, staying there with him. And we were shooting out there in Vegas. So mm -hmm. like it's just dope to be at a, like, you know, did he shoot your little baby experience? He didn't. No, okay. no, no. I, I got that on my phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, just because that situation. Um, I mean, it's private and yeah, yeah you don't want to like. Yeah, boundaries. like I got I got pictures and stuff like that from his cameraman. Like mm -hmm. he took, you know, a couple of pictures and a little video and stuff like that. But um yeah like going into situations like that you kind of kind of you kind of just kind of like know, know like, how to move yeah like mm -hmm. you know i can't just bring everybody with me or mm -hmm. you know just because i know like once i cut you you're gonna get cut again yeah you know what i'm saying so and i you know so like i said me and me and baby are locked in like you'll see me more with him later down the line so hopefully he can be maybe featured in my documentary i mean i got a lot of celebrities featured in my documentary i got arsenal I got a few of the Vikings players. I got a coach from the Vikings. Um, I got Kirby Puckett Jr. Um, if you don't know who Kirby Puckett Jr. is, he is a son of Kirby Puckett, mm -hmm. which is one of the biggest, biggest baseball, baseball players. Yeah, yeah. you know mm -hmm. that played for the Twins. So I got him in there. Um, uh, I got. Well, I'm working on getting uh, Big and Rankin. He's the guy that be doing like wife and Lucci's intros. Like he'd be the one that'd be like yelling and you know, mm -hmm. ad libs. Yeah. Yeah. So he's gonna do my intro for my documentary. Um, yeah, I got a lot of that dope people. So cool. Yeah. So, so when can we expect this documentary to? It be was supposed done. to drop the beginning of this year. I remember. Yeah, yeah, but it got it got pushed back. So um, we're gonna try to drop it uh, in May mm -hmm. around my birthday. Also, when, you know, when the Vikings come back, because we plan on doing like a big event, red carpet. We're gonna do a viewing. Um, you know, security, cameras. You know, I. It's going to be intimate. I don't know if I want to do it publicly or if I want to just do a private event mm. just to make it more exclusive. Yeah. Just because I will have a lot of celebrities. If you have important people, yeah. Yeah, flying in like intimate, that, you know, yeah. to, 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 to be a part of it. Um, 
But yeah, it's it's gonna change the game. Mm-hmm. I definitely. I mean, I don't know too many barbers that you know that have a documentary, especially one like how how I'm doing. But like, it's not just you know, it's mainly about like my barber career and like you know how I started, you know, what I went through, you know, all this you know stuff that I had to deal with, you know, mm-hmm. through all my career. But it also goes back to, you know, where I'm from, mm-hmm. how it was, you know, being you know, growing up in the community that I grew up in how I had to deal with all that racism, you know, how I got, you know, how I overcame all that, you know, so it also, you know, it does touch kind of a little back about, like, my personal life and, mm-hmm. like, where I'm from, but mostly it's my barber career. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. So yeah. outside of this interview, if we want to learn more about you, we got to look out for that documentary. Yeah, yeah. Watch out for that documentary. It's I mean, be obviously not different. everyone can come to the event, but <laughs> where can people hopefully expect to like watch it? Like, it'll be social so, media website. Yeah, so we're gonna have it on social media. We'll have it on. I think like he said, like ten streaming platforms. I don't know, like Apple TV, YouTube TV. Wow. Yeah. Um, we're gonna try to get it on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Um, he has connections to Netflix to where we're gonna try to get it on Netflix because we're shooting it with. A Netflix approved camera mm-hmm. so um like all the stuff that so it's crazy because like we I've been shooting it with him for about a year now mm-hmm. but like so all the stuff that I have I mean we're gonna obviously you know somehow like intertwine it with with what we've been shooting but yeah. like we've been shooting with this professional camera for a year now to where it's like it's gonna look like we've been shooting with for the last seven years, mm-hmm. and it's crazy because we put in a lot of work, yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of time spent, a lot of traveling, you know, was 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 done, you know, mm-hmm. to, to to get these shots. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's gonna be. That's cool. Wow. So yeah. what's next? What can we expect outside of like your documentary? Like, how can people get blessed by your hands like oh, shoot just follow me G- <laughs> gp the barber instagram yes. facebook you know and we'll that. link all of your social yeah. media links and everything to like our page um so we always end with you know what is one piece of advice that do you want to say something uh, i mean no oh man. i thought you were like putting no, your hand uh, <laughs> no go ahead there's, there's uh, something in your mind um you guys, he has just such an amazing background. So like we can go all day. So. <laughs> no, we, we definitely could. Yeah. But no, I was just I was just gonna just gonna say just you know, with this whole with this whole barber, you know, I just you know, I I appreciate all the relationships you know that I've got to to be you know to 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 be with yeah. to be around like you know I, I never thought that you know a kid from a thousand you know a population of a thousand people could. Be Wait, I don't at. think you mentioned like where did you grow up? I grew up in a small ass town, like redneck town, like of a thousand people. Called <laughs> it's called Bird Island. You don't want to shout them out, or is it? Like, no, we don't like. Okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's called it's called Bird Island. Okay, it's like thirty. It's like thirty Bird miles. Island. Yeah, Bird Island in Minnesota. In Minnesota, it's like two. It's like two and a half hours west of the city. It's mm-hmm. like central Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Like if you know where, like Wilmer, yeah. it's like thirty miles south of Wilmer interesting small little like sounds small yeah. i never heard of it all you see life. is tractors and trucks and just, like yeah. cows and deers and shit like that <laughs> like do you go fields. back there yeah i go back there yeah mm-hmm. yep yep um but yeah just you know coming from that from that town and you know i just never thought i'd be where i'm at right now that's amazing and it's just crazy just because all i do is cut hair you know yeah. it's just, just from some clippers yeah you know to be able to travel the world and you know meet all these dope people and you know mm-hmm. you know experience these dope experiences you know and stuff like that so yeah. well i mean you know that's why i wanted to say there's so many you know young men especially young like inner city or outer city um boys um who like pick up a clipper now mm-hmm. you know um and they're so gifted like i've met no effects baby i shouldn't call them babies but yeah. like young they're <laughs> no, babies facts. i know a lot i know a lot of young barbers that are that are just now getting into the game that are i can see that are they have potential very, and they could go far. you know and I've, i know a lot of barbers too that be like you know wanting to get into the mobile barber mm-hmm. and i should do it yeah yeah don't don't limit yourself to this just this barbershop mm-hmm. like it's cool like you know like i've had people be like oh if you just stayed in the barbershop you'd be big as me and like mm-hmm. that's cool but i don't want to be like I can yeah. be as big as you or bigger than you without being in the barbershop. No, you never want to be big as somebody. You definitely <laughs> want to be bigger. No, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So it's like, you know, so. Or just have like, I mean, there's so much. And that's like, you know, we talked about like Minnesota just having so much space for excellence. So yeah. I think it's so like you named so many different styles of barbering that I didn't know. Like you said, there's 
you know, I don't even remember, but you made yeah. a list of like the different type of yeah, styles. And I think there's just so much room for everyone to be excellent. No, facts. And you can like, like I mean, like with me, like, you know, I, I leverage barbering mm-hmm. with a lot of different things Yeah. to put me in a lot of different positions, a lot of opportunities, a lot of doors open just because of the way I move with barbering. Mm-hmm. Like, cutting in a shop is cool. Like, you know, like, I'm not like... If you want to cut the shop, cut the shop, you know, that's cool and all that. But, like, with me, like, that's, it's, it's, not it's bigger, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, like, yeah. I'd rather get corporation money. Mm-hmm. I'd rather get, you know, brand deals, you know, mm-hmm. as a barber, mm-hmm. you know, making $100,000 off of just a deal, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. to go cut on set and make $5,000 for a day, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, so that's, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. You know, that's I'm, so cool. Yeah. And it didn't take overnight to get there. Like, you put blood, sweat, and tears. No, yeah. And, and, and that's the thing, too. Like, you know, seeing some of these barbers, you know, come out of the barber school charging, like, 50, 60 hours right out the gate is crazy. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, we, us barbers, we, we kind of paved that way for them to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, you guys got to put in that work. Mm-hmm. You know, put in that work. Yeah. Take, take, the, take the time, perfect your craft, and put in that work because... The more you put in, you know, put into your work, the more you pour into yourself. You don't, you don't get the rewards. Mm-hmm. It's, gonna, it's gonna come over time, but yeah, but it's worth it. And it's, yeah. yeah, and dream big is what you're saying. Oh, for sure. Don't for sure. settle. For... Don't, don't limit yourself. If you yeah. want, if you want to do something, do it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if you see an opportunity, take it. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. So, like, what is like your big dream? Like, can we expect you in a huge like? big eight-seater van just like traveling the world type of thing no nah, facts yeah 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 i mean I, I have a lot in store i don't really want to talk about it too much of course you don't have to talk <laughs> about we, yeah. we we go we go we gonna see it y'all gonna yeah, see it in we'll the next see. you know couple yeah. years or maybe shit, end of this year you never know yeah. yeah um but yeah i mean you might see me on tour with somebody soon yeah that'll be cool well so. follow him at gp the barber yeah, and i know he seems so cool right now so you can see a little bit of his personality on the social <laughs> media like he's funny yeah, you yeah. know he's not as scared like right now you're a little intimidated i'm like can i get a signature because, <laughs> but you're not intimidating you're super sweet yeah, and no, super yeah. humble and Very really cool. really gifted and grateful um you know i've had all t- different type of like talented gifted barbers on eat and talk um and i love hearing how different you guys are like individually and like yeah. what you guys can each bring to the table and it's just it's beautiful so it's really cool to like hear your experience yeah really awesome i appreciate you having me of course <laughs> um anything else like any last things that you want to say or like i know um, you gave so much gems and advice but like what's something you want to probably leave the viewers with you know outside of like you know reaching your goals you just know? Hustle. hustle don't give up no matter how hard it can get, you know, I'll tell you, I was broke and homeless at the beginning of 2023. You know, I didn't have anything, you know, mm-hmm. but I didn't quit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I, I went, I went hard and now I can say I cut hair for the Vikings. I, you know, I, I do a lot of dope shit. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I was able to, to, to be able to put myself in a position to where I wanted to be. So, mm-hmm. you know, I got, you know, the things that I want. And cool you, enough. Your kids probably think you're the coolest person in the world. Oh yeah, my kids. They yeah, love it. yeah. They wasn't. They wasn't. They wasn't that big into football, but mm-hmm. like now that I'm cutting the players and they get to interact with them, they get to come to their house, they mm-hmm. get to you know play Xbox with them, they get to go on the field, mm-hmm. like all that. Like they got to meet you know their idol Justin Jefferson. They got to you know get autographs, all that stuff. So like they just it makes me yeah makes me happy. That's so fun. So, but yeah, no, I would just say, just yeah, don't give up, no matter how hard it is. Just go, 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 hustle, hustle, mm-hmm. hustle. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Well, thank you so much, GP, for coming on Eden Talk. I always tell people I know the journey is just in process, so I'd love to invite people back. So I'd love to like catch up with you soon and hear, you know, what oh, you're sure. doing. Um, sure. Maybe we'll catch you on the road as well. <laughs> maybe Ina Talk will go mobile and hey, we'll, we can't shoot. <laughs> we'll start tour- <laughs> touring, you sure. know, and everything. So no, you might be my first celebrity <laughs> guest. <laughs> but thank you and thank you. you guys for watching thank and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Sir, deuces. <laughs> <laughs>